All right, scientists, welcome back. This is your last lesson, not only in chapter four, but also for your entire unit on weather and climate. Make sure right now you have something with you to write on and something to write with. Our goal today is to wrap up the problem for the Wildlife Protection Organization's damaged office building, as well as to reflect on what we've learned throughout this entire unit. Remember, natural hazards can cause damage, but there are things we can do to prepare. Once we know which natural hazards are likely to happen, what can we do to prevent damage? This is our question we will focus on today. Our ideas for building a new structure that's better prepared for hurricanes were communicated to the WPO. They want to know if other natural hazards are likely to happen nearby. We'll first look at blizzards and lightning strikes. Here's our question. What changes should the Wildlife Protection Organization make to their building in order to protect it from other natural hazards? We already did hurricanes, so like I mentioned, we're gonna look at blizzards and lightning strikes. Claim A says the Wildlife Protection Organization should add a lightning rod. And Claim B says the Wildlife Protection Organization should get a backup generator. Which claim would you choose? Think about which claim is the best one you have that was truly supported by strong evidence. This is a useful practice for the arguments you'll write later in this lesson. Remember, today's evidence is gonna come from natural hazards, not temperature and precipitation data. All the cards we've used in other lessons already have strong evidence on them, so they don't need to be sorted, but we will review seven of them and figure out which one is really supporting the best claim with strong evidence. Here are some of our cards. These are ones we can use in our argument. Evidence card one shows all the blizzard warnings from 2009 to 2014. You might recognize that map. Evidence card two shows all the lightning strikes from 1997 to 2010. We've already also seen that map. Evidence card three shows where the Wildlife Protection Organization office building is. So that's really important to pay attention to. And then here's evidence card four. It says, when lightning strikes a building, it can cause a fire. Good to know. Evidence card five, lightning rods can direct lightning away from a building. You might remember reading about that in dangerous weather ahead. Evidence card six says, strong winds during blizzards can bring down power lines and cause electricity to go out. And evidence card seven says, backup generators can keep electricity on when the power lines fall down. Now we're gonna look back at these two claims. Claim A, the Wildlife Protection Organization should add a lightning rod, or claim B, the Wildlife Protection Organization should get a backup generator. Which claim do you think is best supported by the evidence we just read? Now is the perfect time to click pause or even go back to the slide with all the evidence cards and really use those to create an explanation of why you chose claim A or claim B. Now is our chance to write a recommendation to the WPO. This is part two of our end of unit writing. We'll review directions and make sure that you know what to do. If you don't have a piece of paper like this, that's okay. You don't really need one, but I will read the top so you know what to do, and then you can always write, draw, type, or explain your answer to someone nearby. Here are the directions. End of unit writing, arguing about preparing for natural hazards. Directions, number one, write a scientific argument that answers the question below. Number two, include evidence that supports the claim you selected and uses scientific language. Number three, your audience is the Wildlife Protection Organization. So that's who you wanna to write to. And your question again is, what changes should the Wildlife Protection Organization make to their building in order to protect it from other natural hazards? Not just the hurricane that we already practiced, but should the Wildlife Protection Organization add a lightning rod or get a backup generator? 
Right now, you'll spend some time thinking about your answer and then writing, drawing, typing, or explaining it. Remember, you can go back to any notes that you've taken during this entire unit or even back to other videos if you want to or books we read that might help you really collect strong evidence. After you finish your writing or your explanation, your drawing or your typing, please continue and watch our next video to close out our unit. I'll see you then. All right, welcome back to the final part of our lesson and of our unit. I hope you spent some quality time writing or explaining your thinking to someone near you using a lot of really strong evidence. Here's a reminder of what our unit question was. How can meteorologists predict the weather for a particular place and time? Throughout our learning, about weather and climate in different places. We worked as meteorologists helping the Wildlife Protection Organization and considered this question. We even spent a little bit working as engineers to help design a solution for their building. We used what we discovered about predicting the weather to help the WPO choose a place to build the orangutan reserve and prepare for natural hazards that occur near their offices. Today, we'll reflect on what we've learned about how meteorologists predict weather and how that can help us in our own lives. These graphs, maps, and tables show specific visual representations. We've seen all of these before. However, in this activity, we'll think about the type of representation and how meteorologists use it rather than what the specific graph, map, or table shows. For example, we should not be predicting the temperature when we see a temperature line plot. Instead, we should think about what the data in the temperature line plot reveals about the weather. Here are some of our guidelines for our reflection. Number one, think about how this data is useful to meteorologists and then explain how it is not useful. Number two, discuss data patterns and how meteorologists use those patterns. Number three, record how this pattern could help you or be useful in your own life. I'll walk through each guideline and give you some examples of how to reflect on these posters. Guideline number one, explain how this data is useful to meteorologists and then explain how it's not useful. So I see our temperature line plot here. We've got two different parks we looked at a long time ago back in chapter two. We've got Bintulu, Malaysia, and we've got Isalo National Park in Madagascar. Now, those temperature line plots. First, I'm gonna think about how meteorologists use line plots to study weather. I remember learning that line plots are useful for showing one month of temperature data for a place, but line plots are not that useful for showing one year of data for a place. Guideline number two says, discuss data patterns and how meteorologists use those patterns. So I wanna think about the patterns in line plots and how meteorologists use those. Remember, line plots help you find the range of temperatures, and in that, there's a pattern. Being able to identify this pattern helps in predicting what the temperature will be either a few days before or a few days after what the line plot shows. That's really what I wanna be thinking about when I see this line plot. Guideline number three, record how this pattern could help you or be useful in your own life. So I wanna think now about how I could use this pattern in my own life. If I wanted to plan an outdoor activity for our class tomorrow, virtually, then I would need to predict the temperature so that everyone could be prepared. If I had a line plot that showed temperatures near our school for the last 30 days, I could predict tomorrow's range. That way I could decide if the class will need warm clothes when we go outside, maybe a raincoat or something else. So I could write down, for example, this is keeping records, know what to tell students to wear tomorrow for, outdoor, for tomorrow's outdoor activity. This is how a line plot would be helpful to me, but I did not use the specific data that I can see on this line plot. Even though I talked about what meteorologists do in the first and second guidelines, the only thing recorded for the third is how a line plot can be useful to you. This change in focus will help you reflect on what you have learned so far in this unit. So now I'm gonna pause for a minute 
and go back and look at all of these cards. Right now, I want you to use your three guidelines and think about these different graphs, maps, and tables. How is this useful as meteorologists? What do they study? How is it not useful? And how is it something that might apply to you in your own life? This is the best time to pause the video so that you can really be looking at each of these. We already did the temperature line plot, so pick a different one. As a reminder, here are your guidelines for reflecting. Number one, two, and three. So now I would pause the video and go back and reflect on those different graphs, maps, and tables. You have learned so many new things in this unit. What are some of the new things that you've learned about weather and climate? Did you finish your 30 day temperature chart yet? If not, keep going. You could find so many patterns about weather in your area. Now that we understand how to use data to describe climate, we can pay attention to the weather and climate in our own communities. It will help us understand what we read and hear about places all around the world. As part of our reflection, we have a few sentences and we're gonna see if you feel like you have a yes or maybe a not yet. And that's okay if you have a not yet, there's always more things to learn. So I will read each of these and you can give yourself a quiet thumbs up, maybe a not yet, and that's okay. The first one says, I understand how to measure temperature and precipitation in such a way that I can make comparisons. Yes, not yet. The second one, I understand how I can predict the temperature of a place for the next few days. And the last one on this page, I understand how I can predict the temperature and precipitation of a place in future years. Here are a few more. I understand what it means for different places to have different climates. The next one, I understand that I can predict future weather events by looking at maps of past weather events. And your last one, I understand that scientists can answer some questions, but not others, and that this depends on the kind of evidence they have. All right, third grade scientists, we did it. Here is your last reflection question, a time for you as a scientist to ask new questions. What else are you still wondering about weather or climate? It could have to do with the ideas of both, how to use your evidence. It could be something near you. Maybe you're curious about a city far away and want to compare them. Any other questions you have, make sure you write, write those down or share them with someone near you and share all of your learning that you've done in chapter four and all of this unit for weather and climate. It was so fun to be with you guys. Thank you so much for all of your time. Great job in this unit. See you next time.